Shalom, brothers and sisters, and welcome to another exciting edition of The Hidden Truth. I'm your host, Priest Aha Wan Mayam, and joining us tonight is uh, Priest Ahab as a reader, and leading us in, here in the group at, uh, fielding questions that a lot of y'all are asking is Priest Kazakia. Shalom, Israel. Shalom, Israel. All right. As y'all know, you know, as we always tell you, you can look at the sign here. We have classes Monday and Wednesday from uh, 7 to 10 p.m., uh, Friday from uh, 9 p.m. to 12 a.m. And then uh, we also have uh, Saturday morning classes 8 to 11 a.m. at 8524 South Brazewood Boulevard, Houston, Texas, 77071. Please catch our YouTube shows. Uh, we'll rebroadcast this show on YouTube, YouTube under ISBHPK. If you got any uh, questions or comments, you want to email us at hiddentruth12.com. Uh, you can see our webpage, www.hiddentruth.com. And also, uh, you can catch this show live streaming on on HMSTV.org or the HiddenTruth.com website. All right. And uh, we'll be doing this show every Saturday from 8 to 9 p.m. from now on. All right. For, so we thank you all for just joining us and for those that had to transition over. Uh, we want to say a special salam to the brothers in San Antonio that are holding down and doing the work um, to uh, Yashar Allah, to uh, Shamsawan, um, to uh Priest of War, and then also in Atlanta, you got a uh, priest, uh, priest uh, Banabad and yeah. Mashaba. Yeah. Uh, also in Guatemala, we have Kawakab, and uh, also another special uh, shalom to uh, Priest Yeshaya. Right. All right. So, and also for y'all joining us, shalom. Um, tonight's topic yeah. that we want to go into, um, we're, we're getting a lot of, you know, we get a lot of questions here and there, and then uh, also you got a lot of people kind of revolting and uprising within Israel right and and uh, trying to base it off the fact that basically the elders were wrong the, right a lot of the things the Hebrew Israelite elders right the, the Hebrew Israelite elders uh, were wrong in what they passed down to brothers and sisters the original talking about the foundational teaching right of you know the 12 tribes and things like that right right so uh, that's what we'll be addressing tonight am I right right well we just want to go directly into the scriptures on this point and um, First, get clear understanding. These are the same people that are saying that they're wrong here or right here using what the elders taught. OK. You know, they're still using the basis and the foundation. Hmm. And that's 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 ignorant for you to say, oh, yeah, they're right here. I'm going to follow this. I'm going to believe in this. I'm going to believe in the 12 tribe sign. I'm going to believe in the archaeology, the anthropology, the history that was brought out. I'm going to believe in all these things, but you know what? This is wrong. Now, what's causing them to start to question these these foundational topics and, and, uh, and this, um, you know, things that people who they weren't here for, what's causing them to, to question them? Where, where I want to start is Second Timothy's, because when you deal with the principles of the doctrine, this is what new brothers and what a lot of old brothers have forgotten. Okay. Uh, and these are the things that, you know, that we have to look at. 
we look at it this way. You know, I can't say the elders were wrong and then use the teaching of the elders. Right. That destroys the whole basis of what you teach. Right. OK, I got you. So it's kind of like <laughs> yeah. saying like, a, you know, oh, I, I found a problem in my math book. These these teachings of one plus one is wrong. Right. I'm still going to use the math book to tell you about division. Right. Exactly. I got you. Okay. you know, and that that's that's ignorance. Right. So but once again, where this comes from, it comes from the lacking of understanding of the principles of the doctrine and the things that we as Israelites and true believers, we first supposed to first look at. So, so what, are, what are some of those principles? Is that what we're going over? We're going to touch okay. on the principles that why this is even coming out of your mouth. How can it even come out of your mouth? I'm going to use the 12 tribe sign. I'm going to use the archaeology, history, anthropology, but I'm going to second question the methods and everything. Read that. Second Timothy chapter three, verse 14. Right. But continue thou in the things which thou has learned. Right. So this is the principles that we are supposed to understand that when we get the knowledge of the most high, that we change it. Read it from the top. But continue. Wait, no, we we add on. But continue. Take away. But continue. Oh, brother, they were right here, but I don't like this part. But continue. We are supposed to continue. Hmm. And this is the principles that we supposed to understand. Go ahead. But continue thou in the things which thou has learned uh -huh. and has been assured of. Now we're, we're going to get some understanding on where the double mindedness, the unsureness comes in because read it from the top. But continue thou in the things which thou has learned. Right. They haven't really learned the doctrine. Mm. They haven't learned the scriptures. Most of all, they don't learn these things so they don't continue in them. That's why you have the different. Uh, now I'm going to teach out of the book of Enoch. Now I'm going to teach out of the book of Jasher. Now I'm going to teach Immaculate Conception. I'm going to engraft all these things from the world or Christianity into Hebrew Israelites. But those aren't the things you learned. So you're, what you're saying is these things like the the books you brought out, the uh, book, book of Jasher, mm -hmm. Adam and Eve, things like that. These are not books that were taught as a foundation. They were not taught by the elders. Right, okay. And once again, if you're going to, they might as well call themselves uh, Christians. Hmm. Why are you going to call yourself Hebrew Israelites when you use the foundation of the seven elders in, in Harlem, Ariah, I mean, Masha, Ariah, Yeshia, Shar, and Kazakh. You're going to use the basis and the foundations, but you're going to say, oh, this was wrong. You can't do that. You might as well just say you're not an Israelite and start teaching what you want to teach. Mm. But if you're going to use the foundation of being a Hebrew Israelite and use the same archaeology, anthropology, history and all the things that these elders have taught, then you have to understand you have to go back to the foundation. Mm. The foundation which they established was in the spirit of the most high. And this is what these uh, young brothers or older brothers that left off uh, forget. Once again, read it again. But continue thou in the things which thou has learned. We're not supposed to change it. We're supposed to continue. Go ahead. And has been assured of. And this is where we're understanding why they fell off, why they changed it, why they added to it. Because they weren't assured in it. And you know what they said? You know what? The old man is crazy. Let me add this. You know what? They're right here, but I want to add this. It don't say that. It says continue in it. Right? Go ahead. Knowing of whom thou has learned them. And this is, this right here is the foundation and the principles of the doctrine. That the Israelite man, a true believer, understands that it was man that taught me, but it was the Holy Spirit that moved this man to teach me these things. And that's the foundation of the knowledge is that it wasn't the seven heads that took it upon themselves to come up with these things, but it was the most high in the spirit revealing who the chosen people through the archeology, span through the anthropology, through the history, through the Hebrew, all these things bringing out the truth from slavery, who the chosen were. So that's the principle that it wasn't man. So in return, when you're not assured, you're not assured of the Holy Spirit. 
When you change those things, it's not a man you're changing. You're changing the doctrine of the scriptures. Okay, so and, you say, you say, I heard you say it's not of man, that this thing come through by man. Who did it come through by? Because everybody knows. And we're going we're gonna to touch on that. Okay. We're going to touch on that. But I want you to read. I want you to jump down uh, before we go into who did it come through. Go ahead. Read down to verse 15 and first, second Timothy's. Verse 15. Uh-huh. And that from a child thou has known the Holy Scripture. Right. So we were supposed to be assured in it. We were supposed to continue in it. The things that we learn as a child. And that's the problem is that a lot of these children came in and they didn't they weren't assured in it and they didn't continue in it. So what they do, they sat there with the high priests, with uh, with the elders, because we all learn from the same people. I've been in the truth since I was 16 years old and and I sat in the elders class in 125th in Harlem. I was taught by Aria. I was taught when Yaikwab was there. We all learned these things in, in the basis right from them. Hmm. And we were assured in it. But what happened was some of us said, you know what? I see what they taught me, but I'm I don't agree with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to engraft the book of Jasher. I'm going to go ahead and graph. You know what? We the Bible teaches that Christ uh, came through the seed of man and the elders taught that. But what I'm going to do is start teaching immaculate conception. I'm going to start teaching the things that I want to engraft, because as a child, I wasn't assured and I didn't continue that way. I, when I got older, I left off from these things. Read that part one more time. Well, so to kind of recap and yeah. summarize, you're saying that these people that made these new doctrines or left off of the original doctrine, these are basically just young and faithless type of people. Or? That's that's the scripture. Read Timothy's once again. Verse 14. Second Timothy, chapter three, verse 14. Go ahead. But continue thou in the things which thou has learned. Well, change it. But continue. Well, no, add unto it. But continue. It, it wasn't up for us. And as we go through these scriptures, it wasn't up to us to change anything mm. because it wasn't man that brought this knowledge. Mm. And that's what we're going to see. But why did they change it? Go to Proverbs 22. Proverbs 22, verse 6. In verse 2 Timothy 3, verse 15, it tells us that we, uh, as children, we were supposed to be assured. And we were supposed to continue in it. But let's let's see what Proverbs 22, verse six says. Read that. Proverbs chapter 22, verse six. Go ahead. Train up a child in the way he should go. Right. So as we were assured in the knowledge and as we were being trained and taught, we were supposed to go in that way. But why and where the, does the uh, you know what? I don't agree with that come from because they weren't assured in it from the beginning. They were faithless. So they were sitting there with the brothers. They were being taught and said, what? You know what? OK, I'm going to listen to you. I'm going to take what you taught me, but I'm going to change this because it says read it again. Train up a child in the way he should go. Right. We were we the true believers were supposed to get the knowledge and be trained and assured and continue. Read. And when he is old and when we were and when we became older, we were supposed to do what? He would not depart from it. We weren't supposed to depart from what was laid down. Why? Because this has nothing to do with man. Uh, I, I got to ask this question now. How does how does a person grow to be that far into a camp to where he can establish his own camp, but still have this faithless mentality? You know, how, how can a person go this far, you know, in the ranks or or does he go through the ranks? Does uh, he even get Paul said it himself. He said after we leave grievous wolves shall enter. Now, I want you to go to 1 Peter's uh, 2, 2 Peter, excuse me, 1 verse 21. Why and how did these grievous wolves enter? Hmm. Because these children, they forgot the principles. And the principles of the doctrine is that men didn't teach me. That men use, were used of the Holy Spirit to relay a message. And that's what we have to see. The seven heads, it was perfect. The seven elders. Why? Because now those seven elders, it wasn't one man. It was seven men moved in the Holy Spirit and were able to communicate with years of history, archaeology, anthropology under their belt 
to be able to relay this message and bring out all the information. Hmm. Right. So read that. So Peter chapter one, verse 21. Go ahead. But the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. And this is what as we as children, as you coming in the knowledge and brothers and sisters, when it says child or children, it's telling us that as we come in as babes hmm. and you learn this knowledge, you are supposed to understand one thing. Yes, the most high used man, but the prophecy came not of man. Hmm. Go ahead. But holy men of God spake as Read. they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Right. And this is what we understand from Peter, Paul, John, uh, from all these men that were uh, during the time of Christ and during the time of our time, because there was specific elders. And I'm naming the uh, seven elders uh, in Harlem, which received the knowledge. This right. is answering my second question. Yeah. Then. Like, it wasn't men. It wasn't men that brought this out. It's there you go. What the scriptures are saying, it's, it was the Holy Spirit. It was the Holy Spirit. Okay, okay. Right, and that's why the first scripture, if you knew the principles of the doctrine, you would know what the elders gave us didn't have nothing to do with man. Yeah. So for you to come in and take it upon yourself, your few years in the truth, and try to discredit 50 years of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, 50 years of studying, 50 years of studying and bringing out these edification, not just two or three years sitting in your basement and looking at YouTube, but really learning and studying. And you want to discredit that with your few years of wisdom shows the lack of understanding you have. Mm. And uh, once again, I've been in the truth 20 years, 20 something years. So how does it I don't even have the right to take the knowledge and change it. Why? Because there's already been elders. 40, 45 years, 50 years in the truth that have studied way beyond what I understand. It is them that can add on in wisdom. Now, a lot of those men that you're speaking of, they're right. not around, though. That, that's the problem, I think. And and I'm, at, I'm wondering, like, who who can change it now since they're, you know, a lot of them are either senile or, you know, we found we have the one where he's following the comforter. Right. Well, who who gets to add to or take away from the doctrine now. What right. And we're going to touch on that. I want to go to second Peter's one verse 20 first. It's, 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 uh, uh, it's, it's really, we really have to be clear in understanding what the scriptures are saying. If we understand that the Holy spirit already established the foundation, the Holy spirit already established and brought out that who the Hebrew Israelites we've been lost. The elders already established this in the spirit. And let's get that to the let's get that uh, out there. First of all, read that. Second Peter, chapter one, verse 20. Uh huh. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Right. Go ahead. Verse 21. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. But holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And this is what we have to remember, that the Most High laid it down. Mm. The Most High had control over all of this. You know, it's once again uh, man's lack of understanding because you did it with Christianity. You did it with uh, <laughs> Catholicism. You did it with these religions. Right. You thought the truth was established on man. The truth was established on the Most High. And as we go to these scriptures... We have to understand, look at all the elders in the path that was moved in the Holy Spirit. Mm. And and there was people, uh, Solomon, he was in the Holy Spirit. He dropped wisdom. But this wisdom is still here in the Bible. But Solomon, what happened to him? Well, he same problem. He got senile and started going worshiping idols. Right. right. But do we is is his is his books out of here? Proverbs out of here? Songs of Solomon out of here? Right. We haven't erased those from from the Bible is what you're saying. There you go. We haven't basically decided we're not going to follow him. Right. And that and that's the thing that we have to understand that in the spirit, Solomon was moved by the spirit when he was out of the spirit. It was recognized. OK, this man is out of the spirit. So if we go uh, to answer the question and this is the questions you're stating is a lot of questions that brothers and sisters have. If they are out of the if Solomon being out of the spirit saw being out of the spirit. Uh, but yet anointed king, but out of the spirit cast away. It doesn't mean the things they done in the spirit was not right. Hmm. 
And that's what we have to recognize when they are in the spirit. It agrees with this. Right. When they are out of the spirit, they're not agreeing with it. So, yes, these men that are that that establish the records and the history and the archaeology of the 12 tribes, they establish that in the spirit. Mm. When they left the spirit, they started going against what was in the spirit. Right. Right. Okay. And, 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 and their work show forth of that. So these are the things that we have to go back to the Bible to understand. Right. It wasn't men. It was the spirit and the spirit agreed with the word. Right. 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 Second Thessalonians. Where are you at? Uh, first Thessalonians. I'm sorry. Okay. Where are you at? First Thessalonians. Go ahead. Chapter one, verse five. Go ahead. For our gospel came not unto you in word only. Right. So this is what we have to remember, that this word came not just in, in knowledge. Go ahead. But also in power. Right. Because these elders, these seven elders, the most high was with them. Why? Because in laying the structure, the structure is still established. The foundation is established that the so-called Negroes, West Indians, Haitians, Dominicans, Panamanians, Puerto Ricans, North American Indians, Seminole Indians, Argentinians, Chileans, Mexicans, Colombians. They are the true biblical Hebrew Israelites. The foundation has been established. And, and that's one thing I have noticed in, you know, regardless of what camp or regardless of who uh, seems to break off or anything that th that 12 tribe sign seems to say the same. The, the basic principles, you know. They, sit, they seem to stay uh, the same across the board. And this is this is where you uh, uh, the grievous wolves don't understand the brothers that are really worried about themselves in power and some vain admiration from men. They're not understanding that. What about the flock? Look at how it's causing that much chaos. So now we're getting to my third question. What type of man thinks he can change? The we, we're going to jump. We're going to jump there. But. Let's let's keep hitting this point and understanding that this word didn't come of man. Okay. This word was of the spirit. The things that were established by those seven elders because they did it right through counsel. And uh, one brother didn't just come up with the history and take it upon himself to go ahead and teach that. You had seven men that were in the spirit established and were able to counsel and do things. Not one brother taking it upon himself in a in a basement to establish his own ideology. Right. OK. But men that were doing it according to the Bible. And that's what we got to go back to. How do how how and who gives me power to say, you know what, brother, let me teach this. I was enlightened. Let me show forth this. The scriptures is going to tell us. But first, read on. And in the Holy Ghost. Right. And in much Assurance. Right. And we were assured of the scriptures. What these elders brought out, the history, the archaeology and the anthropology and the knowledge was brought out through the scriptures. That's what we were assured of. And this is what as children, if you were a true believer, you were supposed to look at. See, but you got men that looked at men. So when they came in, instead of them seeing, wait a minute, this ain't got nothing to do with men. They did what? They took what men said and used it and changed it. Now you got you got the changing of the knowledge. Now you have, oh, brother, I want to teach about uh, uh, the, uh, the angels having sex with man. I want to engraft YouTube teaching into the knowledge. My question is this. When does it stop? When does it stop? If you want to establish your camp like that and, co and teach these brothers that, oh, the elders, what they were teaching was not all right, then what takes it away from that young brother to come in and say, you know what? I think I can smoke weed. Let's engraft that into the knowledge. So you're saying it'll open their their pupils up to start questioning the teachings of the teacher. D okay. There you go. And, oh. Is that not what we have? It, have? Is, it, is, it, right. right. <laughs> is yeah. that not what we have? Because these faithless men are building their foundation off of faithlessness. Mm. And not following. Now they have the same faithless men following that faithlessness wow. <laughs> and teaching and coming up with any doctrine and anything that they get a pen up their butt to teach. They can say, oh, you know what? I want to teach this. I want to add this to it. And what they they not understand is that first scripture. They were supposed to teach the things that they were assured in 
and that they were taught in word, in power, and as children themselves followed. They didn't do that. Is, is one major difference I'm noticing in, in what you're saying is, you know, the originals had the, had seven. They had seven men. Right. And, you know, as you give up these examples, you're showing me that there was this is one person. One person alone is establishing these new doctrines. Right. It's not a, the same council of men. It's not right. the same seven, you know, or the same a group. It's not a group of people. Right. It's one brother. OK. And uh, you got, we have to think about this. If if there is. Anybody that is supposed to make the decisions on uh, edification in the not knowledge or bringing out something spiritual in the doctrine, wouldn't that be brothers that been in the truth for 50 years? Right. How could it be a new brother that just comes in and off the whim? Now he's endowed with all this wisdom, three years, four years in the truth. Listen, 20 years in the truth. I still give credence to the elders, and that's why if I can speak of Yeshia, I'll give credence to him to say, you've been in the truth 50 years, studying for 50 years, <laughs> not some brother off the whim. Right. But even Yeshia understands if I do edify or bring out knowledge, how is it supposed to be done? And we're going to go to those scriptures. It was supposed to be done just like those seven heads. I was supposed to do it through counsel and not through my own mind. And this is what he understands. But do these young brothers understand this? No. They figure these young cats coming in and figure, oh, you know what? Uh, some uh, some Christian cat told me about this online. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to engraft that into the knowledge. That's not how you do things. And that's why there's confusion. We're going to go into that, though. I want you to go into first uh, first Corinthians two, verse four. First Corinthians first. chapter two, verse four. Go ahead. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom. Right. So the elders, the head, they weren't dealing with man's wisdom. Mm. It wasn't some or seven heads just coming up off of this knowledge out of the whim. So or it was seminary school. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, an educational course. This was handed down. OK. Right. And. The things that was edified on the history, the archaeology, the anthropology, the teachings of uh, us being in Rome and Europe. This came over time. This didn't come with one brother, one man saying, you know what? I want to bring this out and this is by my own will. It had to go through those seven elders mm. because the scriptures tell you where two or three are. There is Christ. And we're going to touch on that. Hmm. And that's what the scriptures say. It don't say, oh, brother, I'm the head of the camp. I get to pick and choose and bring up knowledge and add to what the foundation was already established. And, uh, you know, that is backed up by the scripture. I'm remembering something from the Apocrypha um, in Ecclesiastes 25 and 6. And it tells you that uh, much experience is the crown of old men. Right. You know, it doesn't seem like it doesn't seem seemly for a person that came in six months or even three, four years. Right. To be able to change doctrine that's been established for 40, 50 years. Right. And I'm going to say this again. I've been in the truth for 20 something years. It doesn't give me a right to go in here and change the foundation. Right. That foundation was established by the Holy Spirit. Mm. That's why Paul is telling us here. Read it again. And my speech. And my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom. Go ahead. But in demonstration of the spirit and of power. The, the, the seven heads, the original brothers that brought out this knowledge and edified us and increased in the knowledge. It came out through the Holy Spirit. It didn't have nothing to do with man. So would you say the Holy Spirit is, is about, a, you know, counsel was about having more than one person there? Uh, you know, make uh, have giving his own opinion or something. Would you say it comes through m more than one person? Yeah, and you know what? Let's go. Let's let's go into it. Okay. Go to what? What is it? First Corinthians, First Corinthians, the third chapter. Because if any decision, uh, you know, and this is what so-called elders. If you're an elder, you're supposed to give respect to your elders. Mm. You understand? You're supposed to re give respect to the elders that are still doing it. Right. So if I'm teaching brothers and I want them to understand the knowledge and I want them to get the knowledge and to respect what I'm saying, 
how am I going to do that if I'm disrespecting my elder? Mm. You got to think about the foundation that you're establishing is confusion from the door. Right. You're right. going at your elders, but you want somebody else to recognize you as an elder? <laughs> That's confusion. And right. this is what these brothers are doing, and therefore now you have the, the spinoff from the spinoff from the spinoff from the spinoff. Mm. And you so-called elders don't understand it started with you right. because you didn't commit to the foundation. So you, what did you do? Oh, the scriptures say that uh, Jacob had more than one wife. Oh, you know what? I don't want to teach that. I want to go ahead and disannul that. Right. I want to change that. I want to change what my elders set up because I don't agree with that. Well, who gave you the right? You said that to your pupil and you sat down and said, OK, you know what, brother? I want to change this to your pupil. Of course, your pupil will agree with you. Oh. But let's read about how the Bible said for us to do it. Go ahead. And you know what? You read that and because this is your uh, something that you were bringing out. I want you to bring that out. Go ahead. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 29. Go ahead. Let the prophet speak two or three and let the other judge. Hmm, so this this kind of answer, this answers the question that I was asking. Right. The spirit, it deals obviously in more than one person. Right. In their opinion. Right. It's telling you that the, the prophets have to speak two or three. Right. So, and we, we were talking about this. Right. Right. What, what you know, if I get a hair up my butt and I go online and sit down and read an article about something and think it was powerful and thinking it was enlightening, how do I establish that as doctrine? Oh, okay. You, it's telling us here. You let somebody else, at, you let somebody else get, in, uh, get in on it and see if they approve too. Re they, if they see it from your same if, perspective. If they see it's in the spirit. Right. Because if I was to try to bring out this edification and then it, it might not agree with what the scripture is saying. So the most high is establishing that from the door. This is why you read scriptures where it said come in twos and uh, that when you go out, go in twos and threes. Right. This is why it says in Matthews, the 18th chapter, that if you have a problem, brother, brother, it says uh, and, and, and he don't listen to you. Go and get another brother. Right. And that if he don't listen to them, go and take him to the congregation. Not to make it take it upon yourself and make the judgment call yourself. Right. And this is what the problem is. Right. You have one man on his so-called throne going through the Bible and saying, you know what? I don't like the foundation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change this. Huh? Let's take that out of there. Let's take that out. You're removing what the Holy Spirit laid down. Wow. And this is our problem. And this is why you got the spinoff to the spinoff to the spinoff. Hmm. And this is what the scripture is telling us here. Go ahead. Go ahead and go on in that. And I'll get that. I want to get the, another scripture. Go ahead. Oh, read on, read on. Verse 30. Uh, you said, uh, let the prophet speak two or three and what? And the other judge. Okay, so they're supposed to have, if they had an opinion, they brought it to, you know, another person. And then another, a third person judged whether that was, whether they were both in the spirit also. Right. Well, this sounds like, you know, counsel. This sounds like a meeting. Right. Okay, all right. Uh, read on. Verse 30. If anything be revealed to another that sitteth by, let the first hold his peace. Right. So what the say, you know, you bring an idea. OK, I like the book of Adam and Eve. I think I want to teach this. Right. Another brother says, well, I don't think we should do that. These brothers are too young. Right. And you have an elder or a, a third party and they're going to judge between the two. <laughs> but here's of, a right. question. With who? Hmm. With who was he supposed to do it to? Because a brother might say, I did that, brother. Well, well, like did you, you do it with your elders that right. been in the truth for 40 years? Right. Or did you take it upon yourself to tell to talk to a younger brother that was going to be easily persuaded? Right. Right. And that's why. Matt, uh, could I uh, bring this one in? This is uh, just right. What you're saying. This is Proverbs, the 24th chapter. And this is the sixth verse. And I'll read it here. For by wise counsel, thou shalt make thy war. Hmm. So when we were supposed to sit down. The scriptures is established and do things through counsel. Right. I wasn't supposed to establish the book of Adam and Eve, the book of Jasher. I wasn't supposed to establish the Immaculate Conception. So even as elders, what was powerful about the seven heads, the seven elders back in New York, was that when a brother would come with the wisdom, 
you had seven men that would be able to sit down and say, wait a minute, through a multitude of counsel, there's safety. You know what, brother, you're bringing this out, but let's talk about this in the scriptures and see if this is established. This is where the Most High establishes edification or understanding in the doctrine. And this is why the confusion has come about, because you see what's happening. We, we got brothers that didn't do that. And therefore, any brother on YouTube now figures, oh, you know what? The spirit endowed me to change the doctrine. That, yes. <laughs> that sounds familiar. That right. sounds like uh, Moses time. Right. Uh, you had uh, Miriam and uh, Aaron. Although the, the most high also talks to us. Right. Why are you so special? Right. To Aaron. Right. I mean, to Moses. Uh, th this sounds like that same type of mind state. And, it, you know, it came through the same way. They didn't have another to judge. Right. They reason this among themselves. Right. They came up with this with the, in their own mind. Right. Right. And, and this is the safety, the safety that an elder or a brother that is a, a call himself spiritual. Mm. This is what he's saying. A brother that call himself spiritual, he doesn't, the Most High didn't make one kemosabi. Right. He created it to where two or three. That way, if I say, hey, brother, I want to bring this out, you can come back and be the, you know what, I, but the scripture says this and this and this. And then you can come back and say, you know what, the scripture says and this, and, oh, you know what, then that's not in the spirit. Mm -hmm. But what do we have, what we got brothers doing? We got brothers by their own vain opinion adding things right and 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 they're bringing in fruit like that and those fruit see that mm. they seen what they did and they guess what they're sitting back and was saying well you know what i don't want to agree with this so guess what i'm going to change this and i'm another camp that di is different from the what was laid down and i'm another camp and it's confusion it's chaos i want to finish this uh proverbs 24 verse 6. it says here and by wise counsel Thou shalt make war, and in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. So the spirit did establish it because it established it with seven men. There you go. I, okay, all right. And there you go. So that's the way of the spirit, is that they're going to deal with more than one person. They, there you, they, okay. Right. One, more than one person will be able to establish it because how about if you're wrong? The other brother's supposed to be there to say, no, brother, that's not in the spirit or agree with you. You know what? That's in the spirit. I'm going to bring out another one just with this Corinthians. Right. Matthew 18, verse 20. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Right, right. So once again, why is the two or three? Because you can't have one brother in his own mind. The other brother would say, no, nah, that's not on point, or they would agree with him. Mm -hmm. And that's how the knowledge came out. It wasn't established by High Priest Yeshia just bringing out all this information in history. Him and Kazak came together, and they brought it to Ariah. And Ariah talked with this brother and that brother, Yeshia Ashar, and they said, you know what? That's book, mm -hmm. right? And they laid it down. And that's how the Most High was wooded. So this is filtered information. It's like when you get water, you don't just pour it through a screen and say, okay, it's good. No, it has to go through a filtering process. We have to ask ourselves. It says that there are vain men deceived by their own vain opinion. Well, what made his opinion vain? One, by not going with the knowledge. Two, by him not knowing where he is going off at. I don't know that I'm going off and I'm deceived by my own vain opinion because I didn't go to another brother. I sat in and I was getting into the quasars and the moles and the, and the, and the, and the, and the sun and the moon and stars instead of saying, you know what? If I'm going to add this, let me go ask another brother his, his opinion on this, what he sees in the spirit. And that's what we're seeing from where two or three are, there is Christ. That's what we're understanding in the multitude of counsels, their safety. And he's telling us here, once again, in Corinthians, where we're at. Uh, 14 verse 29. Go ahead. Uh, read that again. Let the prophet speak two or three and let the other judge. Okay, so there's a, supposed to be a third that judges and says, okay, that's right or that's wrong. There you go. It's a third. There you go. M meaning that we would all sit here, we will pose a subject, and this subject, if you wanted to bring out some edification that we didn't know, and you're being enlightened, because that's how brothers feel. Well, brother, I was enlightened too. Well, yes. How long? First of all, you got to ask yourself, are you a babe? Are you a child? Because it says, as children, learning. 
Right. So if you're a babe or a child, you need to sit back and you need to let the elder speak. Right mm -hmm. now, what makes you a babe? Your works, not only just your knowledge in the scripture, but what are you still having problems with? You still got problems with lust, pride, envy, jealousy. You still have problems with uh, anger. You don't know how to control your household. The scriptures in Timothy is already established. What was an elder? And these elders that been in 40, 50 years, they're not like these young cats coming in, man, and, 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 and taking it upon themselves and their own little vain pride to say, you know what? I don't like this. They're men that been in doing it. Right. And this is this is the problem. And I I wanted to touch on this subject because we have a lot of young brothers and sisters that don't really understand that you come in and you don't really know that it, it, we pray for them because it's confusion and it's chaos that now you got in a camp that this brother took it upon himself. And we're not going to go to war with them and say, hey, brother, that's not what was originally taught. But at the same time, shame on you, elders that been in as long as me because some of these brothers that are of the known camps they were there when i was uh, a kid learning in a trooper academy and they were learning the same thing that i was learning but what gave them the power what gave them the power to say you know what i want to change that uh, hmm. let's finish it verse uh, 30 yeah go ahead if anything be revealed to another that sit it by, let the first hold his peace. So right. when the third, when that last person basically put down the judgment and said, no, we're not going to teach that. Right. The first person that brought it was supposed to say, OK, then we're not going to teach that. Right. I'll hold my peace. Right. It wasn't to be argued about or subtly brought in later is what the scripture's saying. Right. OK. All right. Go ahead. Verse 31. For ye may all prophesy one by one. Hmm. OK, so that's the scripture showing you that, yeah, one man might prophesy, <laughs> but another one should be sitting by to check to make sure that he's in the spirit of what he's, he's in the spirit. OK. And All that's right. what the most I establishes the body. Hmm. That's why he establishes order. And that's not what you notice on YouTube. That it's, they're usually one with a webcam and just prophesying. Right. Supposedly. Exactly. And changing what was taught. Right. You okay. know, that's why, once again, Yes, brothers and sisters, ask the pedigree. You know what I mean? And it's it's kind of to me, it's kind of it's sad because, you know, now we have to state our registry and, and we have to state, oh, brother. No, we just didn't pop up. Right. We, we are uh, known as the West Coast camp. When the West Coast was established 20 something years back, we were there. Mm. You understand? Uh, you know, now I have to tell brothers and sisters I was actually sitting in. Uh, the classes with the high priests right. were, were sitting in when Yaiqua was alive mm -hmm. and all my classes that came from high priest Aria and, and a lot of people say, well, well, Aria's off now. Well, he when he was in the spirit amongst the seven, it was already established. Mm -hmm. But like Saul, like Solomon, when he left off, you we're not getting the keys of Solomon, that book. Right. Why? Because that book it, it's not in here. Right. You understand? And he's telling you uh, it, that book, whether it was written of Solomon or somebody that said they were Solomon. Right. It's not telling you about the knowledge of the Most High. Hmm. It's taking you into something else. But that's the perfect example that what brothers did. They read the book of Jasher. They read the book of Enoch. They read the book of Adam and Eve. They took it upon themselves to engraft immaculate conception. And I keep repeating those things because these are the things that was never taught by the elders, okay. by the Hebrew Israelite elders in 125th. It was never taught. So where did they come from? By one vain brother. And that's wrong. So, um, well, let me, let me. I, I, I got one. To, uh, yeah, continue that because I got one with you. But I uh, read on if you were. Uh, and that, then I have a question on that. Right. <laughs> Go ahead. That all may learn Go and ahead. all may be com comforted. Uh, verse 32. Verse 32, and the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. So if you are a prophet, then you're going to listen to that third person that overrules you. There you go. Because you're going to be subject and you're going to be in subjection to another prophet. Yeah, you can't person. say you believe in the most high. and You're teaching you an Israelite. But they, oh, oh, the elder that taught me that I was an Israelite, he was wrong here. Well, then why are you calling yourself an Israelite? Right. And this is where they have a field day. These African simplistic cats or these uh, 
Nubians or what? Why I left the Hebrew Israelites. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? This is why they have a field day. Right. Because you got unstable minds that were not children that were assured and kept what they were taught. So now you have these cats have a field day because they see, oh, look, you're not even stable here. There's you saying this, them saying this, them saying this. No, we're assured and we stick to what was established. Right. But this is for brothers and sisters to understand why it's happening. It's happening because you got vain men puffed up wanting to be somebody instead of saying, you know what? Let me think about the fruit. Look at how many young brothers and sisters now that are confused that really desire to. To, and no, we have the truth, but this little doctrine here, this little doctrine here, it, it, it kind of diminishes their strength in the knowledge, their zeal. Right. You know, and we get it all the time. Well, what's different with you brothers? And or, or you get some new cats coming in that been in the truth for years and like, see, who are these guys? Like uh, we've been here 20 something years back before you even knew about us, brother. <laughs> you know, but this is where you got the confusion. And it's sad, but it is what it is. Oh, yeah. Right. Um, oh, read on. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. So what what he's showing you is that this this council, this letting the prophet speak to her three is going to eliminate the confusion. There you go. OK, because uh, we're not going to speak over each other. We're not going to have one vein's opinion. Right. We're going to be able to speak of the oracles of the scriptures. And once again, I say this to you, if you did that, did you do it with elders? You can't do this with with brothers that's under you. You have to do it with men that are that have been in the truth for 40, 50 years. You can't go to a younger brother. You know why I say that? Because they didn't do that. Well, what do you say to people that say, well, Christ didn't go to any any elders? Um, that, that's what I've heard before. Right. You know, oh, well, Christ didn't have any elders. He didn't he didn't go counsel with anybody. Uh, well, well, we know that the scriptures say if, uh, that when you ought to be teachers, you had need someone teach you. Right. So these are th once again, the principles or the basics of the doctrine that we should already know that when you ought to be teachers, you had need that someone teach you. Mm -hmm. And that's what's supposed they supposed to get that. They're going to be taught. We were taught. Right. We were taught. And though uh, the elders were taught. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So whatever brothers saying that they didn't just wake up one day and just have the knowledge. They went in and they to, they were taught, listen, you're Hebrew Israelite. Which would differentiate them from Christ. There you go. <laughs> Did you just wake up one day and all of a sudden you had it? Exactly. Christ? And that's the difference right. is that we were taught and that foundation. Okay, are you done with that? Oh, yeah. yeah. Second Timothy's two. Second Timothy's two, uh, verse 19. And uh, this is the point that we have to nail in to a lot of you young brothers and sisters that are listening. The foundation has been established, but the foundation somewhere along the way has been, has went off. So I ask you, ask those brothers, if you were with those brothers from 125th, Arai uh, or uh, Masha, Arai, Yeshaya, Shar, Kazakh, what gave you the right to change it? And if you did change the doctrine, why didn't you change it going back to the elders? Not the ones that probably went off, but the ones that still stood in the spirit and were moving in the Holy Spirit. Right. Right. Like, you know, high producer shy. Does he approve of what you're saying? Right. You know, um, and, you know, some of these brothers that I always ask. <laughs> oh, them, does man. He approve of that. What you're what you're bringing out. Right. And, and the thing is, is this that. It's funny how the same brothers that learn all this knowledge. Now you want to be disrespectful to elders that taught you. Right. That shows you, man, that the scriptures even tell you despise thy father and not in his old age. Mm. Even even Aria, high priest Aria, I still have a lot of respect for him, even though, you know, he uh, in his old age have condoned this man that's calling himself the comforter. I still have respect. It said, don't despise him. We know that it's not with the true, with the doctrine in the Holy Spirit, but he, he fell off. Right. But he was the one that didn't establish it. It was the Holy Spirit right, right. that moved through him. Right. Just like Saul, just like Solomon, just like many men before, when they had the spirit upon them, it was right. When they left off, 
it was wrong. Right. right? <laughs> so read that. Uh, second, uh, second Timothy 219. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Read it one more time. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth. The foundation was established. Mm. That's the point of the scripture. It was already established. You are supposed to be building on it. You're supposed to be moving on that foundation, not breaking up the foundation and saying, oh, you know what? I learned the foundation, but let me chip away at this. I don't like this. I don't like that. I don't like this. That, that's not up to you. If anybody was supposed to uh, bring out more edification or supposedly uh, change anything, it was supposed to be the elders to come back and say, you know what? Let us add to this. This is something we found out on top of that. Uh, like this point about uh, high priest Yeshia saying that the Chinese and Japanese are Hebrew Israelites. And, you know, the funny thing is this. I asked him. I said, high priest Yeshia, listen, are you saying that all the Chinese and Japanese are Israelites? He said, no, that's ignorance. He said, <laughs> he said he's saying that there is a lot of Israelites that are calling themselves these names. Which sounds like the original doctrine. Which sounds just like what we've been teaching. Isaiah 11, 11, Israel was going to be scattered throughout the world and calling themselves Egyptians, Africans, all the uh, Ethiopians. Hmm. So I, because I asked him plain out, because I was like, wait a minute, that's not the original. So I, I had to ask him, I said, well, are you saying that they're all Israelite? He said, no, that would be ignorance. That's like everybody in America's calling themselves, uh, uh, everybody in America Israelites. So, and this is the problem that these young men or these men that build off the foundation of the elders, instead of them going to Yeshua and asking them, you can tell their father this. You can tell they're, they're not men that build off the foundation. Mm. And I want you to go there, finish that, and I, I want you to go to a few other uh, scriptures real quick. Go ahead. Sure. Having the seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. Right. And that's what we're supposed to have done. Let's finish up with two scriptures. Proverbs 22, verse 28 and Proverbs 22, verse 30. We're supposed to be sure on this foundation and understand that where, where this came from. With the seven, it was established. With the seven, it was done through counsel. It wasn't just one man's vain opinion. It was established through the wisdom and through counsel. And this is why and all the information they got came from those seven. So for you to come back and say, oh, no, that's wrong is ignorance. Proverbs 23, uh, 22, verse 28. Verse 28. Remove not the ancient landmark. Wait a minute. When I come in, am I supposed to be assured or am I supposed to change what was laid down? Remove not the ancient landmark. Am I supposed to add the book of Enoch? or establish the book of Jasher or stick to what I was taught. Remove not the ancient landmark. Wait a minute, brother, but I was, I was endowed as much as you. Remove not the ancient landmark. The foundation standeth sure. Go ahead. Which thy fathers have said. Right, the elders said it. Hmm. It's not given to me, it's not given to you to change those things. Hmm. The most High already established and, and he was with that. And if anything, if you were enlightened or you feel you were spiritually, an angel came to you, you still were supposed to do it what way? Through counsel. Through yeah. counsel. <laughs> right? Go ahead. Now jump from there. Go to Proverbs 23, <clears throat> verse 10. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 10. Go ahead. Remove not the old landmark. Right. So it's, it's once again establishing. You don't supposed to remove the ancient, the ancient settlements. Mm. The things that the ancients and the forefathers laid down. If you do that, think about how ridiculous that is. I'm going to teach that what these old men or seven head taught, but they taught wrong. Brother, you might as well not call you a Hebrew Israelite. You might go. You might as well go over there with Sayonetta and them and call yourself an African and go online and start trying to pick away at the Hebrew Israelites. Mm. You might as well do that because your whole foundation is disannulled then. That's why it's to be going in on these brothers because you, oh, I'm a teach. I'm a Hebrew Israelite, but yet that, oh, they were wrong here. Oh, they didn't, they needed to put this in. They needed to take this away. That's not up to you. Read it one more time. Remove not the old landmark. Read. And enter not into the fields of the fatherless. Do not what? And enter not into the fields of the fatherless. And this is where the scriptures already established. This is why these young brothers come in 
and they leave. Why? Because they go into camps that establish what was laid down, but I don't want to do that. I want to go to a camp that is like my mind. I want to go to a camp that remove the ancient landmarks and set up their own mind. Mm. Yeah, I noticed something in that scripture, you know, when, as it's dealing with fields and things, when you deal with the field that was passed down to you from your father, it's already been inspected. It's already been checked out. It's already been cultivated, right, to, to its perfection. And it's given to a, a, the son, right? Right. And if you go into that field, it's already taken care of. It's, it's kept. But if you deal with a, a fatherless person, they usually got it by some other means, either their own personal means where right. it hasn't been cultivated, hasn't been kept through generations. Right. Or they they stole it. And, <laughs> you know, and, they, they and, came up on it in a wrong way. Perfect point when it says fatherless. Well, only a bastard would disrespect his father. Right. You understand? And that's how you see the respect of these young men or older brothers that don't even have respect for their elders because they should be ashamed of themselves. Mm. They know the ancient landmarks. They should respect those things. Right. Go from there. Go to 2 Timothy 2, verse 5. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. But this is the problem. And, and we're going to end it. I know it's coming to a close. This is the problem with these men. Go ahead. And if a man also scribe for masteries, yet he is not crowned except he scribe lawfully. And this is what we got. We got, once again, and we touched on this class before, we got men that want to be seen of men. They don't want to do it the right way or think about how the flock is affected. Think about how you keep changing the doctrine. That's going to get the knucklehead in your camp to change the doctrine and get him to leave. And then he's going to leave and another brother's going to change the doctrine and it's stupidity. Mm. But brothers and sisters, I'm going to say this. The scriptures said it would happen. It, Paul said after we leave, Grievous wolves will enter. And that's what we have. All these doctrines come up because grievous wolves have entered because they remove what was ancient. And you hear them because they say, oh, yeah, the elders were wrong. They were right in this, but they were wrong in this. Really? How would they be right? But then wrong. You follow them this way. But now you want to take this away. No, I think that's you not liking this or that and picking and choosing. And that's what we did in the world. And it said not sparing the flock to continue that scripture. Yeah. Is that they don't give the flock the same opportunity they got. Right. They, they cut out the things that were given to them that made them strong in the word. Right. And I think that that in that you're not sparing the flock. You're leaving them open to be picked off. But I mean, to kind of to kind of recap what you were yeah. saying, the type of people that are going to change the doctrine is young, inexperienced, um, no counsel and pretty much are just going on their own, you know, feelings. And once again, what way should we do it? Right. It should be through counsel and with our elders. Right. You can't take it upon yourself. So if you didn't do it that way, you need to rethink your little doctrine. Mm. Okay. All right. Well, hey, brothers and sisters, we thank y'all for joining us. Uh, we got a we got a few seconds left. So once again, I want to encourage y'all if you have any do donations, anything you want to give to the camp books, uh, um, you know, transportation yourselves, you want to come join the work, uh, money, we, we accept that. Anything will help the work of the truth. Uh, we don't put it into our personal pockets or savings accounts. It all goes to the building of the school, the helping of, of the children of the camp and things like that. But uh, we, we encourage you all to join us for classes Monday and Wednesday and Friday. Uh, also Saturday mornings now, 8 to 11 a.m. And then catch us next week from uh, 8 to 9 p.m. on this channel. And with right. that, we're going to say shalom. Shalom. Shalom.